I think that what Jeff Vinnick is probably thinking is um, he, he didn't just decide today, right? He didn't just decide I'm going to call a lawyer and I'm going to call an accountant and I'm going to put this fund together today because it's the right opportunity. He's been thinking it for a few months, if not over the last year. And it, it shows that he has confidence that the structures of the government, of the economy, of the Fed, of the monetary system are in place and not in jeopardy. I think it, it shows a sign of confidence that I, I feel um, is, is positive right. for this market. The only, the only difference is if you say, let, let's <clears> take the, the, the first half of the Vinnick bull market, if you will, and then let's take the second half, right? He says he thinks we're halfway through. The first half of the bull market comes with uh, ridiculously low, low uh, interest rates mm -hmm. and low volatility. Right. A trend right. with low volatility. What usually happens next is before you get back to that trend, you go from a trend with low volatility to a volatility environment that's trendless, and then ultimately you resume the trend once again. Well, my point is I'm willing to bet that the next 10 years of the bull market, more if it does last, is going to be more volatile, and interest rates are not going to be where they are now. Right, and he right. associates that volatility with opportunity, which I agree with. I don't think he's given it all clear in the government at all, and I don't think that what no. we've heard in the past has just been noise. It's been real. And the market, when the market was at the highs, it was looking at an economy, pick a number, 4%, some were saying 5%, St. Louis Fed. So what we've had is a resetting of expectations and awakening of a reality that the U.S. is really the only major market, I'm talking about economic market, that's growing. So that bolsters my confidence in the U.S. market because where else are you going to put money? We're also not suggesting that you couldn't have, Pete, you know, you're going to have pullbacks from time to time, sure. obviously, right? If the, we yep. say the, the bull market's been going on, um, you know, for the better part of, of 10 years, yep. summer of 15 uh, felt pretty ugly mm -hmm. when, you know, what was it was August 15th. Yep. A lot of people worried about what was going on in China. So you yep. had the market pull back, yep. but then you resume sort of the... Uh, the and a the year ago, line. January, we had that big one when yeah. we were all out there for Super Bowl in Minnesota, and we were talking <clears> about how, holy smokes, I mean, some of the moves that we were, get, we were getting there as well. I think to the point, and Joe is bringing up volatility, I do think we see volatility at a different level than what we got used to over the last couple of years where we were staring at anywhere from a 10 to a 14, what's, somewhere in that. What's, and then what's normal? Well, what do you think it's going to... What's normal? Well, 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 I don't even know what's normal what anymore because of what... Good. Um, under 20. I think when you get under 20, as uh, a matter of fact, uh, there are a lot of guys out there that talk about 20 to 25 is almost impossible to figure out. But you get under 20, all of a sudden, okay, now things start to feel a little bit different. You get over 25, then it does create a lot of opportunities, but then you have to have the guts and you have to have the capital to be able to get in there and use that volatility through those opportunities that are gained because of the over... There, it's really difficult to sustain anything close to a 2% move every single day. And that's what we are when we're over 30.